a huge box. Oh. This thing is heavy. So I got quite a ways to walk. First of all, this is a new Joy Totus 40 liter mini fridge that they sent me to do a review of. It's huge. I have a 20 liter, I believe, in my vehicle right now. And so this thing is like twice as big. Let me set this down and get a dolly to carry it. With a lot of these fridges, some folks might imagine getting a fridge like this and using it for a picnic, a barbecue, or a tailgate party. And if that is the case, sometimes it's beneficial to have some wheels on a fridge like this. So this fridge is pretty heavy. It feels like it probably weighs about 40 pounds. That's why I don't want to carry it. I think the feature that I'm going to like the most about this fridge, which I'll talk about in a second, has to do with this dolly. Got some shade right here. These boxes are actually pretty easy to open. So the first thing I notice is there's a lot of foam in this packaging. I think probably the, uh, the carrier that dropped it off, they might have handled it with extreme care, causing the foam to break. <laughs> I don't think I'll be able to return this mini fridge later because I think I just destroyed the box. Which I'm not too worried about. I don't plan on keeping this foam. I'll try to recycle it or something. My first impression opening this box is that this fridge is massive. And then I also notice it has a handle right here. So I'm excited to get this out and pack it up and see how versatile this fridge can be with wheels. Oh, and those actually feel pretty solid. So the first thing I thought when I saw this fridge was these wheels would kind of feel like they were going to fall off as soon as I start rolling. And I'm definitely going to put these wheels to the test over the next week. Nice kind of standard roller bag airport handle. Before I move on, let's see how long this cable is. I am curious. I do like to have a lot of length on these cables. I want it to be versatile. So, you know, that's probably about eight feet right there. Pretty decent little cable, eight feet long. The only thing I don't like about these, and this is kind of a standard with these fridges, I don't like these kind of safety DC outlets because occasionally these have a hard time staying in the 12 volt DC receptacles. And so what will happen occasionally is you will be driving around, maybe if you have this in your vehicle, and this will slowly jostle out because there's spring tension here and eventually it will lose contact. And when it loses contact, your fridge will shut off. And if you don't pay attention and your fridge shuts off, you know, you can come back an hour or two or six or a day later. And you know, if you have something perishable in there, that item will obviously be bad if the fridge doesn't maintain its temperature. On the other hand, this fridge does have plenty of insulation. So if this thing did become unplugged for a day or so, the first thing you're gonna do is plug it back in and you'll see what the internal temperature is and you can use that to kind of judge whether or not you feel like your items inside are still good to consume. For now, I'm just gonna pop that in here so I don't lose it out here in the field and we're gonna move on to the AC outlet. All right, so this is a pretty standard AC outlet. The good thing is about these mini fridges that these outlets are almost universal. This one puts out 14.5 volts at six amps. Now this fridge is designed to take between 12 and 24 volts. So if you're running maybe a diesel vehicle that has a 24 volt system, this will operate with that fine. And then if you have a 12 volt system, like most of the rest of us have with our cars, you'll be fine with that as well. So now that I've got this thing unboxed, I'm gonna go ahead and move it over. It's still pretty heavy which is okay because it has these wheels on it. In fact, I want to put it right here in the shade. There's no reason to put it in the sun if I don't have to. Let's get rolling. For testing this fridge today, I thought it would be appropriate to use this Joy Tutus, Joy Tutus. And this thing is designed specifically to run a fridge for eight to 10 hours. So if you are going to like a tailgate party or any of those kind of events, then you can have a purpose made power box that will keep your fridge powered while you're out. For today, I'm gonna to do a couple of things. I'm gonna plug the fridge into this, and then I'm also gonna plug a solar panel into this inlet right here so that this thing can just continuously has power 
throughout today's test. One interesting thing about this power box is once you turn it on, this thing will stay on indefinitely until it runs out of power. That's different than most of your standard portable power stations because many of those will shut off in the middle of the night if your fridge is at a temperature where the compressor doesn't run and then you'll check it in the middle of the day the following day and the power will have been off without you realizing it. If you are using a fridge like this for off-grid applications, the 12 volt DC outlet is significantly more efficient than the 110 volt AC outlet. For that reason, you will always see me when I'm out like this using the DC outlet Unless, of course, for some reason, I don't have battery power. Plugging these fridges in isn't very complicated. I'm just going to plug that in right there. Interesting. It says there's a fuse here. And then I'm going to grab this other component and just plug it in right here. So, boom. And we have power. Uh, let me get rid of this thing here. Please forgive my hands, I was working on a transmission. You guys will see that in an upcoming video. So we do have power. The current temperature is 73 degrees in the shade here, which is pretty nice. It's been getting up pretty high lately. So I've had several fridges that all have the same display on them and this one is a little different than the displays I'm used to. It only shows the temperature, I don't see voltage here. So I wonder if there's a way I can circle through. I run high, L3. This is like the fourth fridge I've had like this, but it's the first time that I've had a unique interface with the fridge. It has the standard buttons, it has power, settings, plus and minus, but some of the codes that I see when I'm cycling through aren't familiar to me. So I'm gonna take a few minutes and just check out the manual and see what it says about operating the fridge. I've got my power button. I've got my settings button, which is set, unlock, switch, temperature up and temperature down. The thing I wasn't sure about was when I go into settings, I have this N2, which means medium. I have high, and then I have L3, which means low. So I'm gonna go with low temperature setting. Press plus or minus to adjust the temperature. Okay, there we go. We're set to 32. All right, guys. So I'm over here holding this minus button, expecting it to start flashing. But in reality, all I had to do was just Tap a tap a tap of the minus button. One tap, I'm gonna set it at 36. I love to have my fridges set at 36 degrees Fahrenheit. I think that's kind of a perfect temperature and I'm gonna let it run. Something interesting about this fridge that I've never had before is there is definitely a fan in there. All of the other mini fridges that I've operated before do not have fans. And so I wonder about the longevity of the compressor in operation. So I'm happy to hear that this has a fan, but for my application in the minivan camper, it's not super loud. I don't know if that's something that's gonna keep me up late at night. I wanna get this mini fridge, you know, set somewhere here centrally so that as I move around throughout the day, the fridge isn't directly in the sunlight, but it's close enough to my solar panel that my solar panel can be in the sunlight. And I'm gonna hook it into this little 216 watt hour power box. I'm gonna leave that up. The grass is a little moist, it was raining. Ah, whatever, we'll just put it down. So I do have this solar panel on my roof and that is actually running my fridge system that's in the van right now. And so I'm gonna use this little solar panel. I mean, if I have the power, why not use it? The sun is kind of moving that way. I think that's a pretty good angle. Solar panel's not in the shade at all. And then I just have to get a cable. And the good thing about that long cable that I mentioned is it's a long cable. I think that's a 5.5 by 2.1 inlet there. And you can't see this, but I'm looking at these little lights here and they're flashing, you know, three, four, five, three, four, five. That's telling me that this is actively charging right now. So whatever power is coming out to run this fridge is coming directly from the solar panel, basically. This is like pass through charging with this solar panel. This is pretty much 73 degrees, which is the ambient temperature where I'm at right now. I'm just gonna throw it in. One thing I like to do with fridges like this when I'm on the move is I try to pack any free space that I have with water because the water takes a long time to change temperatures. And so if I do for some reason lose power, the water itself will kind of help retain the temperature inside of the fridge when I'm without power. While I am in here, there is kind of a compartment under here 
I think you could fit a couple bottles of water in there. And I would almost say this is like a freezer zone. It's under the compressor. The Freon tubes are right here, so you can feel a nice cold spot right there. So if you have anything you want to keep extra cold, I would keep it under the compressor. This is the first time I've seen a hinge like this on one of my fridges, and I kind of like it because when it's closed, it's closed. I know that I'm not gonna lose any energy due to this thing being open. So my little kind of off-grid picnic, tailgate party, birthday party, whatever setup is complete. I'm gonna let this run for a few hours, then we'll come back and check in. The only thing I'll make sure I do is I'm, I'm gonna make sure I reposition the fridge throughout the day to keep it in that little power box in the shade. I plugged this fridge in about an hour ago and it's already down to operating temperature. And what I'm gonna do now is put a couple of my items from my main fridge that I currently actually use to load it up and test it. So this is my 20 quart fridge and it's a perfect temperature and it's full of drinks, eggs, other drinks. I got a few of my little avocado snacks, other, other drinks. And I'm gonna move all this into that other fridge for now just while we're testing it. I should have closed this fridge before I walked away because you obviously don't want to let all of your energy out of your fridge. But the good thing about these flat fridges is they kind of retain the cool air inside of them. Obviously you want to close them if you're not using them, but it's not like your standard door fridge that you have in like your home. You open it up and the air just starts mixing immediately. These are pretty good about kind of isolating themselves from the rest of the environment. This 40 liter fridge is huge compared to my 23 quart one that I have in the van there. It's honestly easier just to bring this fridge over here and set them side by side. Drinks upon drinks and eggs upon eggs. These are both at the right operating temperature. That's what I want them to be. I've been using this fridge for about six months now and I'm gonna use this as an opportunity to clean it out. I can see that after, you know, about six months of use, it's a little dirty inside, not super bad. Just for comparison, this is an older model, 23 quart Joy Titus fridge, and this is a 40 quart. So like footprint size, it's not a huge difference. The compressor itself takes up a lot of space. And then the way they have this kind of open space under the compressor, this fridge for being twice the size inside isn't twice the size in its footprint. So right now this thing is showing that it's fully charged and that's because nothing is flashing here. Even though this compressor is running, this solar panel basically is directly powering the compressor right now. So that's kind of interesting. Got that out of the way. And looking pretty good, I think. So, can I just sit on this thing? Uh, feels pretty sturdy. Would I ever? Should I ever? Can I just stand on this thing? Without hitting my head on my awning. I mean, the body actually feels, you know, I'm not going to jump or stand right in the middle of the lid there, but this thing actually feels more robust. My first fridge, it was aluminum. Everything it bounced into, it would give it a scratch or a ding. This thing feels like it can resist a little bit of bouncing around. The word that comes to mind with this is rugged. I'm at 35 degrees inside of the fridge and that is too cold, so I'm just going to tap. Turning up to 36, I actually just heard the, the fan and the compressor kick off. And so the compressor kicked off first, shut down, and then about five seconds later, the fan shut off. And now it's, it's silent. All right, so let's test the wheels. I have grass all around me. I'm in an open field, and then I have some gravel in the driveway over here. So I'm gonna test this fridge in both of those conditions and see how it handles. Okay, I'm a pretty average size guy. And this handle for me probably could be about this long. I mean, I'm not gonna complain, it's there, it works. But when I'm walking with it, 
it's like just short enough that, you know, I want my fridge to be kind of like this. Maybe that's a safety feature. Maybe it's not good to have this compressor running while this thing's at a 45 degree angle. I can maybe hear even a little cavitation in the pump with this fridge angled the way it is right now. Cavitation is where the pump is kind of struggling to keep the fluid going into the pumping mechanism. I think with this fridge, we're gonna have to shut off the compressor when we're moving it like this at that steep angle to make sure that we don't damage the compressor while we're moving it. We're really talking about something that if you don't shut it off, isn't gonna be a problem perhaps for years. So these pumps last forever. In fact, with all the mini fridges that I've had, none of them have died yet. And the oldest one I have is about four years old and it has been beat up. All right, it's not too bad. I mean, once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. I am, I would say that's my perfect angle here. The wheels seem to be handling the gravel okay. The only gripe I'm gonna stick with is this handle could be a little longer, but it's also better than not having a handle at all. If you are gonna go drag it around a big cooler, I think a handle is something that you actually want. These wheels are narrow enough that if you do bring this to a place like a beach, well, first of all, there are these holes that go into the electronics of the fridge. So I would avoid bringing this out into the sand on the beach and the wheels are pretty much going to offer no mobility in a sandy beach condition. I haven't really talked about power consumption today and in the literature, Joy Titus claims that this mini fridge only consumes about one kilowatt hour of power per day. I have been running this with this little 200 watt hour, which is like one fifth of a kilowatt hour or 20% of a kilowatt hour all day with the solar panel. And this thing is topped off. This would be perfect for something like a weekend camping trip where you have just a simple mini fridge and maybe a small battery that you just want to keep your food fresh and cold. And you don't want to invest in a huge portable power station. So that being said, I have noticed that this fridge cycles for about five minutes when it comes on and it does that about every 10 or 15 minutes or so. So I'm thinking I'm going to get 15 to 20 minutes of runtime per hour at around 60 watts of power draw. If I'm only pulling for 20 minutes at 60 watts, I'm pulling really only about 20 watts per hour with this fridge. I am on a mild day, so I think at 20 watts per hour, even my power box here could run this thing for around 10 hours in those conditions. If you've stuck around the video this long, say hi in the comments. Over the next week or so, I'm gonna take this fridge and this setup and I'm gonna take my tent and I'm gonna head out into the woods and camp with it. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that. And when I do post that video, click here to see it and I'll see you on my next adventure.